Hello YouTubers, this is Gold Standard Season 924 coming at you with a WWE pay-per-view review for you guys today. Now normally you wouldn't see me do a WWE pay-per-view review, but um, you know, my sister recently uh registered for an account where we're able to watch the WWE network, so um pretty grateful for her. Um now we're able to watch some of these uh WWE pay-per-view events, manage to, you know, watch the full stream and whatnot. And, you know, in addition to some of their, even some of the archival footage with WCW, ECW, and even some of their current product as well as NXT. So, um, yeah, I'm very glad to have that. And, um, you know, basically I actually happened to have a chance to watch the Royal Rumble not too long ago. Um, I know I'm a little late for that, but, you know, I mean, Fastlane's kind of approaching as of this uh, as of the video that I'm posting on YouTube. So, uh, uh, the Royal Rumble overall, I really actually enjoyed. I know a lot of people were kind of going into it with mixed emotions about, you know, the build up, you know, especially the main event. And, you know, unlike past Royal Rumbles where you normally have the winner of the match go on to become the number one contender for the world title at WrestleMania. Uh, this year, however, is a bit different. Um, you know, basically, Vince McMahon announced on Raw that this would be, you know, a 30-man Royal Rumble. But uh, the catch is, is that, you know, Roman Reigns, who, you know, has been holding the world title belt since December, uh, has to defend the belt against all these 29 competitors. So, um, yeah, so basically there's a little spin to the, you know, a little spin as well as a little... Um, difference and i say spin especially because um a very similar concept happened to this back in 1992 where you know they did the over the top battle royal to see who would win the vacant uh world title and rick flair would end up winning that belt um so yeah so it's very similar in some ways as far as how it's structured um only difference is that um roman reigns is the champion so uh, no title is vacant or or anything like that, but um, but there is a clear champion and he has to defend the belt in front of 29 competitors. So, uh, yeah. So uh, basically, that's how the Royal Rumble is built up, and um, and I don't mind, I don't mind it actually being a bit different. But I also want to kind of get into more of the undercard matches to get them out of the way. So um, without further ado, um. I'm not going to also talk about the kickoff show either, so um, there isn't really much to write home about. Um, so I'm just going to run down the card and uh, you know just basically talk about the matches that were presented on the pay-per-view. So without further ado, let's get started. So our opening bout consisted of a last man standing match for the IC Championship. So we have Dean Ambrose going in as the champion, defending the belt against Kevin Owens. And overall, this was actually a really fun match. And, um, you know, Dean Ambrose had been holding that IC title belt since TLC. And, um, you know, basically this is kind of like a return bout. Um, and, you know, Kevin Owens is, you know, attacking Dean Ambrose for the past several weeks. And, um, you, know, give, you know, giving them a statement or making a statement, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, this kind of culminates into a rematch. But with an ad stipulation that's last man standing. And so, you know, there's no pinfalls, submissions, count outs. Uh, basically, uh, anything goes. So that's where the last man standing comes to play. So um, winner of the match has to be, has to knock their opponent unconscious at the count of 10. And as long as the, uh, as long as one of the wrestlers is standing tall, um, yeah, they'll walk out with the IC title. So, yeah, like I said, this was actually a really fun match. Um, you know, just a lot of uh, fast-paced, hardcore action going on. Um, you know, a lot of high spots, you know, with, you know, Dean Ambrose doing a suicide dive on the Kevin Owens and, um, you know, actually knocking out uh, the announcing team. And um, there was actually a pretty funny moment where Dean Ambrose, like, took a snapshot at Michael Cole, um, which was, yeah, so that was pretty funny there. Um Yo, know, Kevin Owens uh, used a stack of steel chairs and tried to do a pump-up power bomb, and there were occasions where you know Dean Ambrose countered the power bomb into a backflip, and you know Kevin Owens landed hard on the on the stack chairs. 
Um, you know, even Kevin Owens tried to do a similar thing, um, except he was doing a moonsault from the top rope. So, um, yeah, ended up crashing on the stack chairs as well. Um, yeah, it was just all out. You know, just was really all out. And, you know, the crowd was really digging into the match. Um, and, you know, and Dean Ambrose ended up winning and retaining the belt. And, um, you know, basically he shoved Kevin Owens through a table. So, um, yeah, so that's how he won the match. Yeah, so th like, so this was a very fun match. And to my knowledge, I don't think there has been a last man standing match that didn't involve the world title belt. I mean, this one was actually for the IC title, which was basically your mid-card belt. So this was actually uh, a first time, if you think about it. Um, yeah, so uh, I thought this was a pretty smart way to, you know, start off the show with something to really get the crowd pumping. And, you know, Ambrose retained the IC championship, which I'm not too angry about. I like Dean Ambrose. And, um, you know, Kevin Owens isn't too bad either. Um, I'm hoping he would, uh, you know, try to build up back his momentum that he lost. So, um, so hopefully there are some uh, bigger opportunities for, you know, both wrestlers. Um, so, yeah, so there you go at that. Then we have the tag team title match between the champions, the New Day, defending the belt against the Usos. Uh, this is basically your TV style match. Nothing really much happened. I mean, this would really mean a lot more if they hadn't done this match so many times on television. I mean, I know the granted most of their series of matches were non-title matches, but you know, mostly the Usos have been kicking their asses back to back. So it just kind of, you know, when it comes time for their tag team title match on pay per view, it just really diminishes the hype behind it. And, um, and I know the crowd by this point were already uh, pretty much burned out of that uh, last man standing match. So, uh, so you know, the New Day came out there, you know, cut a promo and, you know, talk about how they lost their trumpet. And now they ended up getting a new trumpet after, you know, Chris Jericho destroyed it on an episode of Raw. Um, and then, you know, the Usos came out there and then they started the match. Uh, it was kind of what it was, and um, I would think New Day as a heel would resort to dirty tactics, but thankfully they didn't. Um, and, you know, Big E was the legal man, so, you know, eventually he, you know, won for his team. So, um, yeah, so the New Day retained the tag titles in a pretty average match. I really do feel that WWE should build up their tag division a little better. I mean, it's still superior compared to what it was a couple years ago, but um, there, there's always room for improvement, and, um, you know, WWE's only built up, like, one tag team, and that's a heel tag team, and um, I know they have the Usos, and it seems like they want to really try to build them as their number one tag team, but um, it's it's just not really working for me, personally. Um, you know, the Usos got back together after an injury uh, that kept one of them sidelined for 2015 i mean i don't remember who it was i think it was it was either jimmy or jay uso but um and then they got awarded a slammy despite the fact that they weren't even teaming together for most of that year so that didn't make any sense um yeah so i'm really concerned about their tag division and the new day have been you know it's just I think W should definitely use uh, have the New Day have some competition, and it seems like they're trying to do that with the Usos. But it's you know New Day ended up beating the Usos. So I mean, what's what's next for the New Day? I mean, I mean that that's no wonder why they've held that belt for so long. But uh, but then again, I mean they're really entertaining the crowds and they're really digging them, and uh, which is really weird despite the fact that they're a heel, but. I don't know, but they definitely do. They definitely need some competition, and um, hopefully there is somewhere down the road. Um, yeah, so the New Day versus the Usos was what it was, and you know, New Day retained the belts. Then we have is the U.S. title belt. Uh, the champion Alberto Del Rio defending the belt against Kalisto. Uh, this was actually a really good match. I know they've been really trading the belts left and right. You know, having these series of matches on Raw and SmackDown, and you know, even trading belts as well, so, which seems very Attitude Era-ish, since they will all, you know, you always have these wrestlers trade uh, 
trade undercard title belts like almost every week or so. Um, yeah, so that was probably my only complaint there. Um, but the match itself wasn't too bad. Um, there was a couple botches. Um, I know one particular botch in mine where Kalisto tried to go for like a sunset flip, but then like he nearly lost his grip. So um, thankfully he uh, managed to get like a schoolboy roll up or some sort. Um, but he managed to get the hook on the leg. And, you know, Kalisto ended up winning the title belt here. So, um, yeah, so like I said, this is a very fun match. Um, you know, a lot of high spots. Kalisto ended up winning the belt and a very good match. So, there you have it, that. Then we have is the Divas Championship. Uh, you know, you have the champion Charlotte Flair defending the belt against Becky Lynch. So, basically, you know, these two wrestlers, you know, they were both part of the, you know, the submission sorority or... Team PCB, um, you know, basically, uh, they ended up disintegrating. Paige ended up turning on them, and then Charlotte's affiliation with her father kind of resorted to her using dirty tactics, and Becky just really questioning on her part. And basically, you know, Charlotte ended up turning heel and attacked Becky Lynch. Um, I mean, the match was pretty good. You know, Ric Flair did play some part in that match and trying to interfere and distract Becky Lynch as best as, she, as best as he could. Um, I really thought Charlotte's heel turn just kind of seemed so sudden for some reason. Um, I don't know, because, I mean, because, like, a couple months prior, like, you know, Nikki Bella had been holding the Divas title belt for many months now and even beat AJ Lee's record. And, you know, Charlotte was kind of like that number one odds on favorite to potentially take down uh you know the you know the sadistic villain and nikki bella you know that's been the talk of the town that you know whoever takes the belt off of her would be like an instant star right out of the gate and you know charlotte ended up you know winning the belt and he wouldn't think that like a couple months from now that she ended up turning heel so it just seemed kind of like i said very sudden and um I mean, the match itself wasn't too bad. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, Charlotte ended up retaining the Divas title. And then uh, and then Sasha Banks came out. And, you know, she and Charlotte had a bit of a stare down. And, um, you know, she attacked Becky Lynch briefly. And, you know, ended up attacking Charlotte briefly as well. Now, it seems, you know, I I watched Monday Night Raw. So, um it seems like they're not going to follow it up. And if it do if they don't, I don't really see what was the whole point of that. I mean, now that Sasha Banks pretty much uh, starting to disassociate herself from Naomi and Tamina. So I didn't really see the point in doing that. I mean, she could still play tweener, but um, unless they really want to have her go face. I mean, they could have done like some kind of Sting and Luger type of thing where... Like, Lex Luger was affiliating with the Dungeon of Doom and while also associating with a babyface sting, despite the fact that Luger's a heel. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they just turn her face. Just, I don't, I don't know what they're doing with that. But, um, maybe they just don't want to have a heel and a heel go at it. But, you know, we've seen heel versus heel before. Um, I don't know. I mean, if they're even going to make a follow-up to that feud but all points of science just tell me that they're not going to go in that route but hopefully i'm wrong um but yeah so charlotte versus becky lynch a match i enjoyed so uh there you have it that and then we get to our main event uh which is the 30-man royal rumble for the world heavyweight title uh yeah so roman reigns actually drew number one so um this is would be kind of like a pretty big test for Roman Reigns to see if he could outlast all these 29 competitors like, you know, Shawn Michaels did and Chris Benoit, even though WWE wouldn't mention him. But, um, yeah, so, uh, basically this was actually a really fun match. Um, hope, I was hoping that this wouldn't be a clusterfuck and, um, you know, the match was really well received 
And um, Rusev actually got eliminated a lot sooner than he did. I would think that he'd stick around for a while since he's, you know, the powerhouse guy. And, um, you know, basically they pulled a 2008 where, like, you know how um, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels were the last two competitors at the Royal Rumble of 7. And then, you know, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels were the first two competitors for 2008, which is kind of ironic there. So they did a similar thing with Roman and uh, Rusev, who were the last uh, competitors from last year's Rumble, and now they're the first two competitors. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of very interesting. Um, hopefully that makes sense. You know, AJ Styles actually uh, made his WWE debut. Uh, pretty massive crowd pop since this was in Orlando, and, you know, TNA used to hold their show in the Impact Zone, so, and AJ Styles was their top guy of that company, so. Um, yeah, that was actually, uh, yeah, a lot of people expected him to make an appearance. Um, I, it was a really big crowd pop, so I thought that was just a pretty awesome moment that he got to, you know, stick around. And um, hope, I was hoping that he wasn't going to get the Daniel Bryan treatment and um, or make the same mistake that WWE did with Daniel Bryan by having him get eliminated too soon. But thankfully, you know, AJ Styles stuck around a little longer and... Um, you know, he ended up getting eliminated by Kevin Owens. So, um, yeah, so the crowd was chanting uh, AJ Styles for a bit, and I was hoping this wouldn't be deja vu all over again. But uh, thankfully it subsided, and it didn't really affect the quality of the Rumble match. Um, let's see what else. You know, Brock Lesnar came out, and sadly enough, he got eliminated and didn't make it to the Final Four. Uh, now he seems to be feeding with the Wyatts. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that potential feud going on. Um, you know, Bray Wyatt's kind of always has this sort of trend where he's getting all this sort of momentum and then it just crashes and burns once he gets to WrestleMania because you know that the babyface is going to overcome the odds and, you know, always feeding with these top established guys and, you know, he never gets any, um, never getting to... Uh, a chance to really show that he is that he can be that potential uh top guy you know especially whether he's a fan favorite or if he's a villain um he could just never get to that level where he where you can say that he is on the level of an undertaker or a john cena of sorts so i'm kind of really concerned about this brock bray wyatt feud maybe or brock versus Braun Strowman. Uh, hopefully it's not the latter, but um, but if it's Brock versus Bray, if I had to choose, and I guess it's all right, but um, I'm just not really feeling the Brock versus Wyatt's because of you know, especially with the uh, we with the potential uh, end result coming off pretty predictable with the baby face and Brock Lesnar going over, but um, I really would like to see Brock Lesnar feud with like someone like AJ Styles or a Kevin Owens or maybe Rusev had he not lost so much momentum after that John Cena feud from last year but you know even Brock versus Rusev wouldn't be that bad and I think Rusev does have some pretty uh it's actually pretty talented you know for a big guy so he's not that entirely bad so I actually could tolerate him a little more um I can't think of anyone else uh nothing coming to mind so um yeah i was really disappointed brock lesnar got eliminated too soon should have made it to the final four um you know triple h ended up uh taking the number 30 spot so uh it was kind of what you a lot of people expected um you know since we haven't seen triple h in a couple in like quite a while so uh I, you know there's been speculation that he, whether or not he was going to make an appearance which he ended up showing up and um you know crowd popped um and there was i think um backtracking a little bit during the rumble you know roman reigns ended up getting escorted out of the arena since he got uh manhandled by the league of nations so they really took a page out of uh stone cold and the corporation from 99 so yay welcome to you know, just basically rehashing the same stuff but um yeah, so Roman Reigns actually got eliminated. Uh, didn't make it to the final two, surprisingly. So the crowd just really popped when Roman Reigns got eliminated. Um, 
And you know, it was down to Triple H and Dean Ambrose. So it almost felt like anything can happen. And um, and I think a lot of people thought Triple H was going to win. But I think when Roman Reigns got eliminated, it didn't feel that obvious. So, um, yeah. So I think a lot of people thought Dean Ambrose was, could potentially win that match. So that would have been something interesting. I was going to say that there has never been a Royal Rumble winner who was holding a title belt. And um, that would have been actually a big uh, accomplishment, you know. Um, but, you know, Triple H ended up eliminating Ambrose and, you know, winning the Rumble match and, you know, the world title there. So, um, yeah, so the match and the whole pay-per-view ended with Triple H, Vince, and Stephanie celebrating together. And they basically close out the show that way. Um... Yeah, so uh, this was actually a really fun rumble. I actually thought this was, you know, very well received and you know very tolerable than last year. Um, I didn't think that they, you know, the crowd had to resort to like, you know, just starting riots off the streets or anything like that. Um, I mean, it was still the rumble match in 2015 could have been a lot better. I will say, I just don't agree with um, just how rallied you know some of the people in the crowd were. Um, especially like when the show ended, because you could really see videos on YouTube of, you know, the, the crowd, you know, the people in Philly just, you know, starting up fires and riots, which was completely ridiculous. But, um, but it was actually, you know, 2016 Rumble really stepped their game up. I'm thinking that Triple H is going to, you know, main event WrestleMania as the world champion, so... I mean, Fastlane, you know, they already announced that this was going to be a triple threat match uh, with Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Brock Lesnar, where the winner of that match would be the number one contender to face Triple H at Mania. So, um, gosh, I don't, I really don't know. I, it's pretty obvious that, you know, Brock Lesnar is going to feud with the Wyatts, so I can't see him winning it. Um, I think it's down to Roman and Dean. I mean, Dean's pretty much the odds-on favorite, and Roman Reigns is kind of a mixed bag for some people. And it seems like, based on the storyline, that they're going to do Roman Reigns versus Triple H, which wouldn't surprise me if they go in that route. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for my WWE Royal Rumble 2016 review. Uh, what did you all guys thought about this pay-per-view? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Were there some things that you like, or were there some things that kind of bugged you in a way? So, uh, yeah, feel free to comment down in the comment section below. And uh, hopefully I can do a review for uh, Fastlane. So stick around for that. And until next time, this is the Gold Standard Caesar 924 signing out.